Good morning, YouTube. This is Ryan here, going to be talking about deadlift and deadlift stance. But before I get into that, I you may notice these headphones here I'm wearing, the Fotiv BTH 3s, and they're headphones, wireless headphones that also have a capability of wi being wired. And I bought them for $50 on Amazon. I'm going to be making a review on it. Check the link in the description in case you're into my tech reviews, if you haven't seen them. But uh, anyways, I want to talk about deadlift stance, so let's get on to that. Um, my experience. So when your feet are closer together, I find that I'm much stronger and faster off the ground. I want to feet are wider. Um, off the ground is a little bit more difficult, but lockout is easier. So those are pretty simple. Now let's take this into kind of a, uh, this is obviously the conventional deadlift. Let's talk about kind of sumo versus conventional now. So when typically when you do a sumo deadlift, depending on, you know, if you do them or not, or have done them in the past, Sumo deadlift is supposed to be much more difficult from the ground, easier at lockout, whereas a conventional deadlift is easier off the ground and harder at lockout. So if you think about this, and so let's take a look at the conventional by itself. If you are a narrow stance conventional, it will be harder at lockout. And if you just do a little bit wider stance conventional, meaning your, your feet are still inside your, your hand, your grip, it will be just a little bit harder on lockout. Now remember, when it comes to 70, 80%, maybe even 85% of your one rep max, it'll have very little consequence because uh, you have enough speed off the ground. The thing where the stance sort of matters or has a bigger effect is when you're going for a max lift because uh, a lot of the time you don't have a whole lot of error room when you're going for a one rep, or true one rep max, uh, something that's really, really heavy, and especially if you're very experienced. So I just wanted to add kind of my experience again to you know what Johnny Candido said on his video he posted last night. And the one thing that I'll uh, he talked about snatch grip deadlifts and stuff like that. And it's, it's kind of interesting because one of the things that I remember when I train, sometimes when I'm warming up, you may see it in another video, and I might mention it in another video, is that sometimes my grip will be just a little bit too wide, sometimes determined by where the knurling is on the bar, depending on what bar I happen to be using, just regular gym bars, uh, Olympic bars, um, is that I will go just a little bit too wide, and then I'll, I'll hit my my stuff hit my junk and it'll, it'll it won't hurt but then I'll, I'll make contact with it with the bar and it's not uncomfortable so that is sort of interesting and then I and I was kind of wondering why that why that is um is is my arms too short and actually what it is is because I was just a little too wide with the hands with the hand grip so if I put my hands closer that doesn't happen anymore usually you know this is you know deadlifting 135 or deadlifting um you know 225 or even maybe 315 uh, and then once I get to four and up, you know, I start to, my upper back starts around just a little bit so I don't have that problem anymore. But it seems to be that it has a lot more to do with my grip grip uh, distance. So that's, there's that. And one of the things, that, uh, too, that just got confirmed with, with uh, just talking about conventional now, feet being closer is easier off the ground, harder at lockout. Feet a little wider, easier at... Um, Hard, a little bit harder off the ground, easier at lockout. Is that uh, a, a photo, a, a video actually? If you look it up on JTS Strength uh, with uh, Michael Tushar, Tushar, he uh, he talked about that actually. He mentioned it briefly at the end of his video, and uh, that sort of confirmed it for me. I was always wondering kind of why some might, why let's say 450 will feel a little different. Uh, you know, sometimes it'll feel easy, sometimes it'll feel light, and that simply is is that a lockout becomes a little bit harder. Uh, and one can suspect or maybe make a suggestion or make a assumption that one of the reasons why narrow stance uh, becomes a little bit more difficult lockout is the bar begins to slow down as you bring it to your um, to your thighs. And one thing that I heard from uh, um, Ernie, Eric, sorry, the Little Bridges, uh, the dad, he said, um, you know, bar acceleration is really important. And I know this is kind of obvious, and, you know, of course the bar has to accelerate, but, you know, when I deadlift, or when I used to, or the way I used to deadlift, uh, you know, six or eight months ago, uh, I, I would, like, yank the bar, you know, and I just try to get as much speed as I can off the ground as fast as I can. And um, and th that was sort of what they were, th with the little bridges, they were talking about how that was sort of a problem because the bar would whip, you know, because Eric is so strong, he will, the, the bar will whip when he gets to the top and he will lose his grip you know so so timing was a big issue with those massive weights that have a lot of bar oscillation on a deadlift bar so kind of thinking about that so the proper acceleration so you can't start super fast off the ground i don't know if that makes any sense but uh, i guess if you've been deadlifting for a while you, you might understand what that means because if you try to deadlift so so fast off the ground you just 
like for example, run against a bar almost, you're going to run into some lockout problems like I have in the past. If you've seen some of my videos from the Omar Isaf Delev challenge from over a year ago, you'll see me missing above my knees. And quite often, when I do miss a deadlift that gets off the ground, I almost always miss it above my knees. Very rarely do I miss it below my knees if the bar gets off the ground. So, so uh, this kind of comes together full circle to all the things I've listened to on YouTube over the past year and a half or so, or two years, almost two years now, I consistently listen to YouTube videos as um, Jason Blaha. And Jason Blaha always used to say in his videos when he talked more about weightlifting is he would talk about um, just getting faster off the ground or faster off your chest. And that's what it comes down to. So if you get faster off the ground, you're going to be able to fix a lot of your lockout problems. Uh, Jeremy Hamilton talked about uh, off a deficit would help his lockout. He thinks that working off a deficit helps the lockout better. And you got all this information, you're just trying to decipher all this stuff. And, you know, I hear it, but I don't really, I kind of believe some of it. But you really have to kind of relate it to your own training. So a lot of stuff I say, you got to say, oh, that makes sense for me, or I don't quite understand that for me. And it could be that you're just not far enough along in your training. You know, you just haven't tried enough stuff, or you haven't been consistent enough with your deadlift training. Or let's say you are more experienced, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Because I'm in this sort of transitional period where, you know, I'm making really great progress. And... And just being consistent with it at all. Um, but, uh, so, and, and the one last thing, um, God, I forgot his name, he was, he was interviewed on the uh, PowerCast, a big t tall guy, right, he pulled 800 pounds, um, man, he's a really good guy, I'm going to find the link and put it in the description later, uh, but he is, um, I saw him deadlift, and his feet are completely turned out, they look like this, you know, his feet, his heels are almost together, I think they are together, his heels are together, and they're like this, you know, on the ground, and, uh, and because of that is because I think his arms are short his his just his anatomy is set up that way so he sort of like does a close like almost like a weird Olympic squat from with a deadlift with 800 pounds I think it was the the video might be 750 I can't remember but um so he had to kind of fix his so that's sort of in a little bit of extreme case when you talk about his foot position because he's a bigger athlete I think he's like in the 240 he's a really really big guy right so his feet are turned out more. So his feet are turned out more, but then his heels are close together. I tried doing that. It doesn't work because my knees just, they get in the way of my arms. I don't, I have to, I've tried it a few times, but I do know that does help with the lockout because your feet, whether your feet are wider or your feet are more turned out while in conventional stance, you'll get a little bit better lockout. Now, um, and, then, and then talking about what Brian Shaw in um, Johnny Candido's video, he mentioned like really, really wide uh, kind of, he said he called him. A, he, th in his opinion, he was sort of an anomaly. His feet are really, really wide in the um, the deadlift stance. Uh, for I think he was pulling 900 pounds or something like that. And I've tried that before, and I find that it's super easy, um, or it's easier. It's it's easier when it's sub max. You know, when you're like 80 percent. Uh, for me, for whatever reason, I get a lot more butt activation, more glute activation. Um, and then when the feet are closer together, of course, you have a little bit more distance to travel. When the weight gets heavier, the bar will decelerate after, you know, you pass your knees. And it's, you know, so you accelerate the bar, and then it starts to slow down. So that's kind of when you miss the lockout. And sort of, my little bit rambling here, I hope you got some good stuff from this, because I, I mentioned a lot of random things I didn't think about talking. I didn't, wasn't going to think about, I wasn't thinking about talking about, is that, um, the, I miss lockout because it loses bar speed. So I get it off the ground, I get it to my knees, and it just slows down. It's a slow grind. And uh, in order for me to make sure that um, I miss, I don't, I don't miss lockout, and sort of the things that I think about when it comes to training is I need to uh, focus on doing what sort of Dan Green does. Because I watch him do sumos, and one of the things he does is, you know, if you've seen him do some block pulls, he will kind of pull back and then he'll look up, like, very, almost very aggressively. And that cue is actually not a great cue for most beginner lifters because it just, it, it can cause some bad habits. But obviously he's Dan Green, so it's different. But with him, I can see why he's probably doing that. This is my guess. I don't know. But he's just trying to make sure he accelerates the bar into his thighs, like, so he completes the lift. Because once that bar starts to lose speed, you know, at 900 pounds or 800, 800 plus pounds, um, that bar is going to stop. So, so those are just some thoughts. Hope you liked the video. Click like if you haven't already. Comment below if you relate with any of these things. Uh, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Oh, one last thing. 
I'm going to try to attempt deadlift 600 pounds block pull in the next coming weeks. So I'll be posting that in a little bit. So you should see that in about the next three or four weeks. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.